Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Today on General Hospital, Molly confronts Christina at the gravesite, Lois is supported by her co-workers, and Lulu is moved to General Hospital. Molly informs Christina that her precious, innocent kid is buried here because of her. Molly exclaims that Christina wants to blame Ava, but she went to her room to start a quarrel. TJ tries to interfere and tells Molly not today, but Molly accuses Christina of being selfish and self-centered. Alexis asks Molly to stop, which causes Molly to lash out at her mother for being right on time in supporting Christina. She rants that Christina is never held accountable or responsible for anything she does. Molly questions her mother about why she was so ready to reactivate her law license so she could assist Christina in stealing her kid. Alexis breaks down in tears. Sam informs Molly that they understand she is devastated, but this is not helping. Molly takes out an affidavit written for Christina that she discovered in her mother's briefcase. She inquires whether her mother intended to file it before her kid was born or remove her child from her arms and hand her over to Christina. Molly knew Christina would not give her the kid. Christina acknowledges, no, I wasn't. Christina cries, saying that the baby was a part of her and that she nursed her. Molly shouts, I killed her. Christina claims she was her mother for eight months, and Molly cannot take that away. Molly claims that women protect their children, and she is selfish for causing her baby's death. Christina sobs, saying she loves her more than anything in the world. Molly complains that she doesn't understand the concept of love. She accuses Christina of killing her daughter and demands that she accept it. Christina collapses on the ground in sobbing. Christina tears, saying Molly is wrong and that she adores her baby. TJ checks on Christina and asks if she is in any pain. Meanwhile, Molly focuses on her and Christina's discussion regarding her becoming the surrogate, as well as Alexis' admonition that no legal arrangement would make the baby Molly's. She recalls additional disputes and disagreements between her and her sister about the baby. Rick tells Molly they should get her home, but she refuses to leave without TJ. TJ walks over to Molly, takes her hand, and they depart. Christina continues to sob, and Sam gives Rick a harsh look while Alexis cradles her. Chase phones Brooklyn from the PCPD to check how her mother's section is doing. At home and heart, she informs him she needs to leave because the caller, Myrna, is continuing insulting Lois' accent on air. Dante arrives on the set and informs Maxie that Lulu has been transported to General Hospital. Dante adds that she has had a setback and has been moved there to better meet her requirements. He wished he had more information, but he assumed she would want to know. Maxie is grateful to him. Back on camera, Haven informs the caller, Myrna, that she was raised to believe it is impolite to criticize the way someone speaks. Haven tells their audience that at home and heart, they encourage everyone to utilize their voice and let deception help them with their skin. Haven and Lois resume their broadcast. Haven welcomes one of their new hosts, Pearl. Pearl introduces a new collection of vegan handbags, which will be available in the following sector. Later, Haven tells Lois that she was wonderful and a natural. Brooklyn claims the figures are excellent, and she sold the most things this quarter. Tracy informs Lois that she did an excellent job. Lois privately urges her daughter to be honest with her, is her accent unbearable? Brooklyn informs her that the figures don't lie, and she was a hit. Tracy and Haven join them. Haven agrees that Lois was a hit, as does social media. Haven wants to schedule her next appearance and make it a regular occurrence. Tracy advises they stop inflating Lois' ego and go home. Tracy says they will schedule a call to book their next appearance. Liz cares for Lulu in the hospital when Laura arrives. She inquires about her daughter's well-being. They stroll outside, and Liz tells that Lulu is stable but her liver is still failing. They're not sure why this is happening, but testing are being done. Liz claims she's doing everything she can to keep herself comfortable. The nurse assures her that Lulu is in excellent hands and that they will see her through this. Laura understands what others must believe about the situation, it is hopeless, and she should let her kid go. 
However, she understands Lulu is a fighter and they must give her every opportunity to return to them. Maxie arrives at the hospital and speaks with Liz about Lulu. Liz tells her what she knows about Lulu and encourages her to sit down and chat to her friend. She claims that many persons who wake up from comas remember what others said to them when they visited. Dante returns to the station and Chase inquires about the funeral. Dante said it was a disaster and nothing could be spoken or done to help anyone. Chase questions why he isn't with his family today. Dante tells that he received unexpected news and needs to immerse himself in work. Chase offers to listen. Dante says it's Lulu who has been admitted to General Hospital and has deteriorated. Chase inquires as to if Rocco is aware, to which Dante responds, yes. Chase inquires as to Dante's well-being, aware that Lulu may be slipping away. Dante has no idea how he feels or whether he has the right to feel anything. He adores Sam, as well as the life and family they built together. Chase understands how fantastic he and Sam are, but Lulu is his wife, and they have a child, so he might have difficult feelings for her as well. Dante claims they were divorced when the tragedy occurred, and she was moving on with her life. He doesn't believe she's laying in that bed fantasizing about him. Back at the hospital, Maxie sits with Lulu and polishes her nails. She is confident that Lulu will persevere because so many people rely on her. Maxie claims that includes Dante. She believes Dante still loves for Lulu, considering he was the one who came and informed her of her relocation here. She admits she never told Dante that Lulu would tell him she still loved him and wanted him back. She didn't think it would be fair to Dante, and he should go on. She informs Lulu that it is time for her to rejoin them all, including Dante. Dante enters in right as Maxie says this. Meanwhile, Liz is speaking with Laura. She claims Lucky told her years ago about Lulu's aplastic anemia as a toddler and how strong she was for her at the time. She says Lulu requires that strength again. Laura misses Lucky and wishes she knew where he is so she can take him home. A man is thrown into a cell somewhere. His wrists and legs are shackled, he has a bag over his head, and he is sitting on a stool. Later, a man holds him against the wall and removes his hood, revealing that it is Lucky. Curtis, Portia, Jordan, Stella, and Marshall return to Curtis and Portia's home. Stella and Marshall excuse themselves to get some dinner, and Portia brings up the conflict between Molly's father and her family. Jordan reveals that Rick is not well-liked in this community and operates in a gray area. She reveals that he is estranged from Sonny, and he and Alexis do not get along, so he wants to stay away from Port Charles. Curtis claims Rick is still Molly's father, and she plainly adores him. Ava promises Trina they will never discuss this again. Trina thanks her for being honest and assures her that nothing will ever damage their friendship. She understands who she is, but she also recognizes her own potential for good. Trina claims that if she stops Kate's from hurting Christina, everyone else will notice. Ava vows she'll make things right somehow. Trina encourages her to reveal the truth. Ava cannot, not yet. Trina tells her that time is running out. At Sunny's, Jason assures him that the pharmacist has been securely transported to his island, away from Kate's. Sunny says they need to bring Valentine out now and will use Anna as bait. Jason is concerned that this may result in them being targeted by the PCPD. Sunny claims he did not want to cause trouble with Anna, but she turned him into an enemy. Suddenly, Anna appears. She warns Sunny that Ava has changed her story and believes Christina threatened to murder her. Sunny claims this is a lie, and it is all Jagger's fault. Anna agrees and feels he pressured Ava into making the remark, but she cannot prove it. Sunny claims none of this would have occurred if she had managed Valentine from the start. He claims Valentine tampered with his medications, was involved with Pikeman, and attempted to take him down. Sunny jokes that he might have done it all from Anna's bed. Anna informs Sunny that he set this all in motion years ago by putting Karen Wexler on that stage. Sunny pulls a frown and dismisses her. Anna claims she isn't here for him. Anna informs Jason that he must accompany her to the station because she has questions about Scott Baldwin's disappearance. They leave, and Anna tells Sunny, always a pleasure. Anna returns to the station and asks Jason where Scott is. 
he has no idea and claims he last saw him here with Ava. Anna informs him that she has received a credible information that Scott is missing. She also knows Kate's isn't above using Scott, like he did Christina. She is also unhappy that he told Sonny about Valentine. He claims he didn't tell him she let Valentine leave, only that he was behind the medication switch. Anna tells him that since his return, he has been straddling two worlds, Sonny's and hers, and that this must end. She tells him that he must choose. Anna reminds Jason that he has a second chance and does not need to return to Sonny. He can have a fulfilling life where he can be present for his children and Carly. He claims she understands more than anybody else that not everything is black and white. Anna believes he has matured since his early days with Sonny. He wonders when she learned better after being a double agent, was it because of Faison or Valentine? He claims she expects more from him despite repeatedly compromising herself, most recently. She confesses she is compromised, but he can leave. He assumes they're done and walks out. Anna claims she and Kate share one thing in common, they both vowed to protect and serve. She will never adopt John's techniques, but she will take down Sonny, and she hopes Jason is not standing next to him. Back at the gallery, Ava reflects on the accident and what occurred. When Sonny comes, she proceeds to leave. She wonders if he's here to kill her. Sonny claims that given what she did to Christina, her kid, and helping Kate's, she deserves to die, and his face should be the last thing she sees. However, Sonny claims he is not here to take her life, but to preserve it. Molly arrives and, outside the courthouse, learns from Sam what occurred. Sam says their mother held her own, while Kate's had a complete meltdown. Sam claims Kate's supplied no evidence and may face charges. She believes the accusations against Christina will be dismissed because there is no case, and Kate's is only attempting to reach Sonny. Sam finds the situation ludicrous, citing Christina's recent pregnancy loss as the reason. Molly and Sam catch up on GH, Sam quickly realizes what she has said and apologizes. She asks Molly why she isn't here. Molly admits she only found out about the hearing through a friend, the court did not want her to know since it could reflect partiality. She sobs since she was also with TJ discussing their daughter's burial. Sam embraces her sister. Christina, Sonny, and Alexis return to Alexis' home. Christina compliments her mother on her performance in court and expresses gratitude to her parents for their support. Alexis says they love and adore her, and Sonny promises to always protect her. Kate's walks to the gallery and laments to Ava about Christina's arrest and the judge's decision to release her. Ava inquires about Christina's arrest, as this is news to her. He explains that after they discussed her story concerning the images, he went ahead and arrested Christina. But now she's walking. Ava asks if he's spoken with Scott. He hasn't, and Ava is concerned because she hasn't heard from him. She believes she will need her lawyer now more than ever. Kate's claims she doesn't need Scott because he's her only hope left. He tells Ava that she must make the statement he wants and that she will do so in the manner he specifies. She claims it's late and she's exhausted, so they'll deal with it tomorrow. Kate's rejects, citing a 48-hour deadline to resolve the issue. He says they're going to start now and improve her statement. Nina makes a call from somewhere outside. She says she's desperate, so she's contacted them. She notices they owe her a favor and is prepared to collect. Let's begin this week's column with what I consider to be the best and happiest portion of the week, the conclusion of Mac and Cody's father-slash-son tale. Having James flee only to be rescued by Cody was the ideal way for Mac to understand he was being an ass and let go of his resentment. It also made him realize that Cody was not the same person he was a year ago, or even when he first arrived in town. I can't wait for any pleasant Scorpio Jones Bell moments to happen. Felicia returns to the boathouse docks and asks Mac if he is pleased. He is and says she was correct. She laughs, she's always correct. They kiss. Anna arrives at Laura's workplace, as per her invitation. Laura informs that they have a meeting with the incoming WSB station chief. Laura is aware she recently arrested him. Anna says that Brennan has been acquitted and is now a fully accredited agent, and they will most likely receive no further explanation from the WSB. 
Brennan comes, and Laura explains that she set up this meeting because they all share common interests. Laura gets right to the point, believing that Anna and Brennan's shared background and skill sets present a one-of-a-kind opportunity. She wants them to find Valentine Cassidine. Anna claims the FBI is looking for him, which is beyond her reach. Brennan observes that the WSB strives not to meddle with FBI investigations. Laura is concerned since Valentine has a granddaughter. Anna tells Charlotte that Valentine would never endanger her. Laura receives a call, which interrupts their conversation. Something came up, so she excuses herself for a moment. Dr. Navarro departs, and Christina wonders what full recovery entails. Alexis believes it implies her body will heal. Christina inquires, what about the rest of me? Alexis admits that it will take time, but her heart will improve too. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.